everyone and welcome to Camp Talk. Today we'll be going over what is a Newman projection and how to draw them. We will then use Newman projections to interpret different structures and their energies. This form of examining molecules is called conformational analysis. So let's get right into it. When we look at the geometry of a molecule, there are a few things you can look at. First, there is the bond length, then the bond angles, and another characteristic of a molecule is its dihedral angle. The dihedral angle is a spatial relationship of the bonds on adjacent atoms, so atoms that are not directly connected or bonded. To demonstrate this concept, we will consider the molecular illustration of hydrogen peroxide, or HOOH. Both of the OOH bond are at angles are 96.5 degrees, but we need to know the dihedral angle to completely describe and know the shape of the hydrogen peroxide molecule, because the molecule could also be drawn like this. To understand this further, let's draw out the molecule with two intersecting planes. Each plane has one of the oxygens and hydrogens it's bonded to. The angle between these two planes is what's called the dihedral angle, sometimes also known as the torsion angle. So there are three possibilities here for hydrogen peroxide's dihedral angle. You can visualize these dihedral angles if you, also, if you have a model where you can put together the molecule. So here, if you hold one of the OH bonds fixed and rotate the other, we can actually see how the different dihedrals look like. So here, if we rotate the right plane first 90 degrees, we get option two, where the dihedral angle between the green hydrogens are 90 degrees. And then if we rotate it again 90 degrees, to get option three, the dihedral angle between the green hydrogens is now 180 degrees. Molecules containing many bonds typically contain a lot of dihedral angles that need to be specified. So to summarize this concept, the geometry of a molecule is determined completely by its bond length, bond angles, and the dihedral angle. This is especially important for more complex molecules. With this background, we can introduce the idea of a Newman projection. With Newman projections, we can view dihedrals much more easily. Because of this, Newman projections are super useful in planning experiments. Drawn here are three molecules that are actually of the same chemotherapeutic drug with a Newman projection incorporated into each molecular drawing. The dihedral angle of a specific bond is super important for this molecule because otherwise it won't act properly in your body because each of these drawings have different properties because of their different Newman projections and then therefore their different conformations. For example, the melting point for each molecule here is completely different. So, scientists drew the three possible Newman projections to figure out how the mechanism and reaction would take place and tested to see which is the one that would, would be best to use. In most labs, especially in drug discovery and bacterial treatment, Newman projections are a starting point from which scientists and researchers determine how to conduct experiments to get desired results. This wouldn't be possible without Newman projections because they help predict mechanisms for re reactions which determines the results or products of a reaction. With this background, we are now going to learn about Newman projections by examining ethane. Ethane has two carbons and six hydrogens. We can draw the geometric three-dimensional structure of ethane using the line and wedge model. Here, if we look at this first carbon, we have one hydrogen going up, another going into the page, and another coming out of the page. For the second carbon, we have one hydrogen going into the page, another hydrogen coming out of the page, and another hydrogen going down. Similar, but kind of reverse from the other carbon. We can have an even better 3D drawing with the ball and stick model. And here we can see the hydrogen coming off each carbon even better. Now imagine we look down the carbon-carbon bond as if it were a tube or a stick. We would see the different hydrogens coming off of the stick and the hydrogens look staggered from each other. They, are overlap they aren't overlapping and they're kind of off from each other. This is where the Newman projection comes into play. A Newman projection is a type of planar projection along one bond, which is called a projected bond. So in, in our example of ethane, the carbon-carbon bond is our projected bond. To draw a Newman projection, you start with a circle, which represents the near carbon or the near atom in the projected bond. The lines coming out of the circle meet at the start at the center and come out beyond the boundaries of the circle. These three lines represent the three bonds made with that near atom. We then draw three lines coming out of the boundary of the circle. These lines represent the bonds with the further atom, or the second carbon in our example. The lines are drawn based on the orientation or the dihedral angle of the atoms to each car um, between each carbons. So here before we saw that since they were staggered, that all of the lines here are then drawn staggered to each other because all the, all the hydrogens are staggered.
In Newman projections, only the near atom is shown. Both the projected bond and the second atom is hidden behind the Newman projection. With the Newman projection, we can also see that dihedral angle between the atoms even better. So the hydrogens in the, between the, with, on the front atom and the hydrogens on the back atom, we can see the dihedral angle as shown here. There are two possible ways to draw the Newman projection of ethane. And those are the two different ways we can visualize the molecule. These are called the conformations of ethane. Our one example we've already shown is a staggered conformation, where the hydrogens are staggered from each other. The second conformation is if the hydrogens overlaid each other, if they were right in line with each other along that carbon-carbon bond. This is called the eclipsed formation, which is the second conformation of ethane. Both of these conformations are really important and have a lot of different characteristics and energies, which we'll see on the next page. So we just talked about these conformations, mentioned their energy, but why do these conformations matter? Well, it's because each molecule has a preferred conformation that allows it to be on a low energy level. And molecules, just like atoms, like to be at the lowest energy level possible. High energy makes them unstable. So here we have a graph of the energies of ethane, which show the energy versus dihedral angle. So we're comparing the different conformations of ethane, basically. This graph shows what happens when we rotate a carbon, in this case I've arbitrarily chosen the front carbon, and we see how the hydrogens move and thus how the energy of the ethane changes. Through the course of the rotation, the molecule passes through three identical staggered formations and three identical eclipse conformations. And we can see that identical conformations have identical energies. The graph also shows that the eclipse conformation is when the energy is at a maximum, and the staggered conformation is when the energy is at a minimum. So the staggered conformation is the more stable conformation. One hop on this graph is about 12 kilojoules per mole, which means it would take about 12 kilojoules of energy to convert one mole of staggered ethane into one mole eclipsed ethane, so converting between each conformation. But why is the eclipse conformation of higher energy and relatively less stable? Well, there are a lot of theories, but the main theory is that the bonding orbitals of the hydrogens of the front carbon interfere with those of the back carbon when they are eclipsed because they will overlap because they're so close together. In this position, the hydrogens also repel each other since they would be so close together because the bonds are closer when they have a dihedral angle of zero degrees. Thus, repulsion is greater in the eclipse form. This repulsion is called torsional strain. But here, more specifically, also remember that the repulsion is not really between the hydrogens themselves, but the electrons in the bonds of the hydrogens. Let's do another example to really get the concept straight. So, let's try to draw the Newman projection of butane. Butane is C4H10, already a little different than ethane. So first, we'll try to think about the molecule. We can see that butane has two central carbons, and unlike in ethane, where all the groups are hydrogens, in butane, each central carbon has two hydrogens and one CH3 group. With that, we can draw the line and wedge model of, of butane with one CH3 group going up, a hydrogen group going into the page, and a hydrogen group coming out of the page for the left carbon. And for the right carbon, we have a hydrogen going into the page, a hydrogen going out of the page, and a CH3 going down. To try to imagine the molecule further, we can draw the ball and stick diagram, where we can see the CH3 groups and hydrogen groups even better. So if we look down our projected bond, here the central CC bond, we see from both drawings that the conformation again looks staggered. We see that the CH3 groups are opposite of each other and all the groups are staggered from each other. From here, we can draw the Newman projection. The front carbon has a CH3 group going up and the two hydrogens coming out towards the bottom. And the back carbon has a CH3 group going down and the other hydrogen staggered from the front ones. So this is a Newman projection of this specific setup of butane. But again, this is only one possible conformation. While ethane only had two types or two conformations, since butane has these CH3 groups, its conformational analysis is a little more complicated. We have already drawn one conformation, but if we were to rotate this front carbon in either direction, we would get three more possible conformations. We could have the CH3 group still staggered, but they could be next to each other. Or we could have them right on top of each other in this next conformation. Or we could have a hydrogen group on top of the CH3 group. These latter two conformations are eclipsed, as we saw before. This first one is staggered, and the second one is also staggered. Keep in mind that while we didn't do this with ethane, because all the groups were the same, 
Even though we didn't do it, it is always important to label each group coming off of your central carbons. This is especially important not only, only keeping organized, but in also figuring out which groups are overlapping or next to each other because they might be causing less or more repulsions like we see here. We have four different ex um, possible conformations because of CH3 group. So it is a mis big mistake that I didn't label the two hydrogens in the first Newman projection because as we see, there are four possible conformations we need to identify. So all of these Newman projections, they all have different energy and so different characteristics. So to really do this um, well and look at these further, we have to look at the energy diagram again to really understand each Newman projection and do its conformational analysis. Again, we can see the energy graph for butane just as we did ethane. Here again, we have the dihedral versus energy. Now, this graph is not as consistent as with ethane, where each dagger conformation had the same energy and each eclipse conformation had the same energy. Here, it's a little different. So let's start by looking at the different conformations. If we just focus on one CH3 group, so in this case, the group on the front carbon, and focus it as we rotate around, we can see that the position of both CH3 groups as it rotates from right on top of each other to next to each other to further and further away until it comes back around. We can see it rotate all the way around. Now let's go in and label if they are eclipsed or staggered. This first one is eclipsed, the next is staggered, then eclipsed, then staggered, then eclipsed again, then staggered again, and then finally ending with the same eclipse conformation as the first. We can identify the center one where the CH3 groups are opposite to each other and staggered as where the energy is the lowest. We can see that the first and the last eclipse conformation where the CH3 groups are eclipsed and right on top of each other as when the energy is the highest. But why is this eclipse different than the second eclipse? Naturally, when the CH3 groups are overlapping, there is more repulsion than when the CH3 group overlaps with the hydrogen, which is what's happening with the second eclipsed one. So the eclipse form with the CH3 groups overlapping is the highest energy conformation because there is more of that repulsion happening. There are more hydrogens, the CH3 groups carry more um, electrons, so there is naturally more repulsion, which is why it's at an even higher energy level. Now, why is the stagger with the lowest energy level energy different than the second staggered that we see that has a little bit higher energy, but still very low energy? It's actually because these are two different types of staggered conformations. This first one with the lowest energy is called anti, and the second one is called gauche. What determines if a conformation is anti or gauche is the location of the CH3 groups relative to each other. In the anti, the CH3 groups are opposite to each other and the conformation is staggered. While in the gauche, the conformation is still staggered, but the CH3 groups are closer together. They are adjacent to each other. So again, we see that the gauche and anti-conformations are the staggered versions, so we have lower conformations than eclipsed, or energies than eclipsed. But between them, the anti is lower. Why is that? Well, this is because in gauche, when the CH3 groups are adjacent, there is still a little bit of that repulsion because the CH3 groups have three hydrogens coming off of a carbon, which can interact with the other CH3 groups, so they have that bit of repulsion, but not as much as the eclipse. But when the CH3 groups are anti, there is absolutely minimal overlap and repulsion between the CH3 groups, which is why it's the lowest energy conformation. That is like that is a whole that will be the whole conformational analysis of butane. And this is basically everything and all the terminology that you need to know for Newman projections as a whole. So overall in this video, we started talking about dihedral angles, but really we discussed Newman projections and how to visualize them, how to draw them, how to interpret them, and we learned about conformational analysis, which is the investigation of the different molecular conformations of a molecule and their different relative energies. Scientists do this often when setting up experiments and mechanisms to see how reactions will take place or how much energy they might need to put into a reaction to get molecules to a desired conformation. In summary, we learned about two overall types of conformations, eclipsed and staggered. Within staggered, there is the anti and the gauge formation. We also talked a lot about the energies of these different formations, and you can often find out the relative energy of these conformations, like the energies relative to each other, by looking at where each group is, where, they're where the there are bonds, and how these bonds and groups repel each other, and then from there finding the relative energy. So for example, we saw that the eclipse is of a much higher energy because the hydrogens are or these the methane or the groups are repelling each other, whereas a staggered conformation will have a lower energy level just because there are less of those repulsions. So that is all for today. I hope with this that 
um, Newman projections are a little easier to understand. You can put any questions you have in the comments, and for more videos and chemistry help, please visit ChemTalk's website at www.chemistrytalk.org or ChemTalk's YouTube channel for videos on general chemistry, organic chemistry, and biochemistry.